In our previous lesson, we looked at the difference between launching a script and launching a, an actual program uh, using the exec family of functions. And I noted down there that you cannot actually launch or run bash script using that uh, program. Namely, we tried to run the ping command together with the grab command. And what it, we did in that video was simply call ping dash c, let's say five google.com. And that would just ping google.com five times. And at the end, it will give me my, uh, my average, my round trip time. And here's the minimum milliseconds, the average and the maximum. Right, we can see them uh, out here. And I wanted to sort of get that information through the grab uh, command. So I was just taking the output of ping, using the pipe to sort of move the output to the input of the next command, which was grab in this case. So I wanted to send that to grab and I want grab to just take in this, the line that has RTT on it. And hitting enter would just pause for a few seconds while it does the pings and then there's the result. That's our round trip time. And only that is what we got on the uh, terminal. And in that video, I showed you that you cannot do that. But how can we actually do this uh, now that we know more about processes in C? So here we have that uh, command that I executed on the terminal. And this is what we want to simulate in our uh, C program. And we know that we cannot actually do this just using one exec call. We learned that in that previous lesson. Uh, so let's analyze this line a bit. The, the main part to realize is that really we're executing two programs, right? We're executing here ping. So let me get here a marker. So we're executing ping if I, there we go. That's the first program. And the second program is grab, right? So we have here two programs and these are the programs and RTT dash c5 google.com th those are all parameters okay the next part to realize is that they are linked they are linked through that pipe operator and the pipe operator is really named before the uh, pipes in c that we have learned about in this course and really that's all this pipe does except it does a few more things besides just opening a pipe so if we think about this being a pipe right this is a pipe that also means that we are actually opening a pipe that has two ends and those two ends in this case in the bash script uh, are routed in a certain way so we know that when we executed ping dash c we executed this line uh, this command on its own it printed out some lines on the screen but when we did this it no longer printed out any pings right it just printed out whatever grep found. So that means that the output of the left hand side, the left program is actually routed through this pipe. Okay, so we have basically, uh, let's say here, this, like that, and here this we can note down to be the STD out, right? So this is the standard output of this program here that is routed to this pipe. Okay, that's the first end of the pipe. So this ping is actually writing its std out, not to std out, not to the terminal, but to this pipe. So that's why we're not seeing anything on the screen. But then there's another question. How does grep know that, oh, okay, I have to take a look at those, uh, those lines, specifically the, the, the lines that we have uh, the ping actually give out in the terminal. How does that know? Well, that's because also the standard input of grep is set to be on this pipe. So std in. And because of this, since grep knows how, how to handle the standard input, right? You can actually type in this command standalone if you type it in, a standalone is not going to do anything. It's going to wait for you to type in something on the keyboard. But because its standard input was rerouted to be the pipe, it's no longer going to wait for your keyboard input. It's going to actually accept this output, which is 
std out of this ping, which we know that ping prints out those lines on the screen. So this is how the pipe operator works under Unix. Now, to simulate this uh, behavior, we already know how to do all these things. We know how to create a pipe, right? We know how to execute every single uh, one of these uh, programs using the exec family of functions. We also know how to redirect uh, output or input. There's a video that you can check up top. We, with this information, we can actually simulate this line of code inside our C program, this line of, well, bash script. But before we get into the code, I want to show a diagram so that you sort of get the idea of what I want to implement here. First, we're going to draw as rectangles each process. So we have here the main process. I think that's kind of obvious. I guess we can make it and move it a little bit to the left if I can do that. That'd be great. And this process is the main one and we're not going to do anything with it. It's just going to create the other processes and the pipe and everything else. It's going to wait and not execute the grep nor the, uh, the ping command. So this guy is going to fork into another process that is going to execute our ping, right? So here we're going to have ping. Actually, I can make this a bit bigger like that. That's going to be our ping, uh, our process is going to eventually execute ping. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the grep process. So we're going to have to create another process for the grep. So grep right here. So in total, we're going to have three uh, processes and the way they're going to talk to each other is going to be through a pipe. So I'm going to actually draw here a simple pipe and I guess something like this, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so it's going to be a pipe that's going to also be created by our main process. So it's going to be created by our main process, but we're going to redirect the input and the output properly from the ping process to the grab process. It's going to, it's going to go the flow of information. Let me actually pick out a proper color here. The flow of information is going to go like this from ping to grab. And that's really all there is to simulating this uh, bash script. Let's get to the code. So since the main process is going to open the pipe, I'm going to start with opening that pipe. I'm going to say here int fd of two and if pipe, right, we're going to give it the fd and if that is a uh, negative one, then we're going to return an error code. So we're creating, we are creating a pipe and checking its output again. And if that is something like negative one, then we know something bad happened and we're just returning out of the main function. If everything is all right, we know that we have a pipe and now all we have to do is to create the processes, right? So we need to create two processes. First, PID1 equals four. If PID1 is less than zero or really negative one in this case, uh, we should just return an error code because something bad happened and you, you couldn't actually fork the process. Now that we know that we have forked the process, we want to know, well, the process that called fork is going to be our main process. Okay, so we're not going to actually do anything special there. We're going to do everything special inside the, the child processes. Uh, so if PID one is zero, that's how you check if you're in the child process or so child process one, that's going to be the one for ping, right? We want to first execute ping, let's say. And here, let's start with just uh, executing the ping function. To do that, we're going to use execlp. Execlp is really nice that it takes in the the parameters one by one. They don't have to be in an array, and you also and it also gets access to the path uh, environment variable, right? So what we want to execute is called ping. The first uh, argument is going to be ping for our arguments for the ping. Next up is well that count. Remember, I wanted to ping five times and then get the average. So I'm going to say dash C and I'm passing here five. The next argument was the destination. We want to ping google.com and lastly null here. And that's really all we need to pass to exec to launch the ping uh, program. At this point, we can actually just stop and check if everything is fine. We just want to wait for this process to finish inside the main process. So remember exec 
does uh, replace everything inside the executing process. So this exec function is never going to return anything. It's not going to continue onward. So we don't need to have the code for the parent inside an else because we know that everything after this can only be executed by the parent, the main process, because this child process got replaced by the pink process, by the pink program. So it no longer knows that, oh, it should return here. Okay, so that means that I can just wait here, wait, I'm gonna use wait pid here. I know I didn't use this too much, but since we have two processes, we should wait for them individually. Wait for pid one. I don't care about its uh, status nor about its options. So if I do all this, I should, well, I should open a pipe that I don't close, I know that, but uh, we should at least see the ping in action. If I launch this, and we do actually see a result here on the screen, we have five pings and it definitely works. Okay, that's amazing. Let's continue onward. Now we want uh, first to reroute the standard output of our process that starts the ping. So before exec, of course, we want to reroute it. How do we do that? Well, remember we have that dupe2 function. And this dupe2 function is kind of interesting. All it does it is it takes in the, the first FD. So here I can pass in, well, FD of one, and it duplicates it into FD2. Right, so that uh, FD2, whatever this FD2 is going to actually uh, point to this, whatever FD1 was. Okay, so it's gonna dupli duplicate it. So here we want uh, FD1, which is the right end of the pipe. Right? Remember the FD of one is the right end, FD of zero is the read end. And since we have to take the standard output from the ping to write to the pipe, we have to pass in here FD of one, and we have to pass in here, well, the standard output. So I can say here, std out file number. And that's gonna be, well, that's really gonna evaluate to one. And as you might remember, one is the file descriptor for standard output. Now, before going further to the grep program, we should actually note here that we have to close certain pipe ends. So we know that we have to close uh, FD of zero because we don't use it. And we also have to close FD of one because FD of one actually doesn't, uh, it remains open even though we have duplicated it because this dupe two doesn't just move the file descriptor, it actually creates another one. So we have two, two file descriptors that point to the same, well, pipe. And we don't need two of them, we just need one of them. That's why we're gonna close this end as well. Okay, that's our ping uh, process. Now let's finish up with the other one with the grab process. So we have here pid2 equals fork. Again, if fork or if pid2 is uh, less than zero, then something bad happened. I'm just gonna return an error code that's free. If pid2 is zero, that means that we're in the child process. So child process two, and that is our grab process. And in here, again, we Let's start with just executing the program. So that's gonna be easy. We just say exec LP and we want to execute grep. The first argument is going to have to be grep. Next up is the second argument, which is our RTT because that's the, remember that's the line that we want to find inside our ping output. So I'm just gonna say RTT. And lastly, we have to pass in null. Okay, that's, that's simple enough. Now let's also do a similar thing that we did in here, except for the standard input. All right, so we have here to call dupe two, but this time we have to call in dupe two to FD of zero, because remember, grep replaces its standard output with, well, the reading end of the pipe. It's waiting to read, grep is waiting to read from that pipe. That means that it should read from the reading end, which is FD of zero. And we're gonna replace that with std in file number. std in, like that. Okay, and of course we're gonna close the ones that will remain open. So FD of zero 
and fd of one like so and that's almost everything we need to wait of course for p2 so i'm just gonna do this and let's see here ftp2 wait and um yeah that's almost everything we can launch this program and see if it actually prints out something on the screen let's wait here and we're gonna wait for the ping to execute and at some point we get our round trip time so that definitely works but there's an issue like what what's what's happening why why is it not stopping just kind of stuck there huh very interesting right well the issue with this is actually pretty simple if you think about it so the idea is that grep keeps on reading, right? Keeps on reading input from the whatever pipe you have, whatever file descriptor you gave it, right? It keeps on reading the input from the standard input, which is for it is this pipe now. But, well, since it is uh, a pipe, when does it know when to stop reading? It's like, okay, I can wait here and keep on, keep on reading, keep on waiting for some input until when? Well, that uh, actually happens when all the writers, all the writers to that pipe are closed. So we actually have multiple writers opened on this, uh, on this pipe, right? We have first, since remember a pipe, a, a pipes or really any other file descriptor gets inherited when you call fork. So each of the, let me actually bring out this diagram. Each of the three processes actually have access to these file descriptors, right? Um, and we have closed them in this, in this one, right? Because we've called close of FD of zero and FD of one. We have closed them on here, though we have duplicated in the ping. Remember, we have duplicated it uh, right here. But that something nice about Linux processes is that they close their STD out once they're finished. So once ping has finished its execution, it does automatically close this, uh, this duplicated file descriptor of FD of one. Okay, then what writer is opened? Well, what do you know? It's actually the writer on the main process. The main process still has uh, FD of zero and FD of one. Right, even though we don't make any use of it, but it's still there. So that's a pretty big issue because that means that uh, since this guy still has, the main process still has the right end opened for that pipe, the grep process still waits on that uh, pipe to get input. It's only until we close that right uh, end that this guy finishes its execution. So we're gonna have to actually close both ends of our pipe. Or really just the right end in this case, but it is always recommended to close any ends you don't use. And in this case, remember, this code is only executed by the parent process, by the main process, and uh, we're gonna close both of those ends right here. And now, if I try to launch this, we're gonna again wait a bit till the pings get executed. We don't get anything on the screen and we do get a result and the program finally finishes. So that is very nice. Now it actually all works together. This is how you can simulate the pipe operator from bash in C. If you look at it, I don't think it's that complicated. It's less than 50 lines of code and all you have to do is really dupe this and properly manage your uh, pipes. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. I know that this topic is a bit in depth. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.